first episode of In Conversation, we'll be having a conversation with Mr. Prasanna Kelkar, a computer teacher for over two decades who has modernized and brought this institution of St. Peter's to a whole new technological level. Thank you, dear, and thanks a lot for introducing me. Yes. Do you have any in conversation questions? You will go ahead with it. I'm yes. happy to answer. Sir, could you tell us a bit about yourself and your journey in becoming a computer teacher? Yes, sure. Uh, basically, it started all the way back in, in the year 1997 when I thought of picking up St. Peter's School to be my uh, teaching destination as such because prior to that I was working at Army Public School Pune and I worked there for two years and then I thought of you know an institution which is such a reputed one every uh, new teacher who wants to be joining wants to join such an uh, elite institution which will give you goosebumps while working because the kind of people, the kind of children you have in school, that gives you pride in yourself. That's what I believed in. And uh, that moment I gave an interview, was selected for it, and since then I'm working with Peters. So it was a great journey. And it happened due to my mom, my mother, who herself was a uh, what do you say, a uh, master graduate in Sanskrit and being a vice principal for an elite school near Mumbai. So, you know, those were her instructions. Whenever you work, work in a reputed institution where you will learn all the time. A teacher has to be a good school. Thank you, sir. So, moving on to the next question. What inspired you to choose a career teaching? Specifically in this field of computer science. Yes, in fact I was not going to become a computer teacher. That was not my first goal. My first goal was to join Navy. I had given my written exam, passed my written exam. But I was, uh, I don't say I was a failure. But due to medical, I was rejected from Navy due to my vision. And uh, I have an right arm which is not straight the way it is supposed to be. So all those two points I was rejected. And when you you know when you get such dejection kind of you get nervous and you don't know what to do practically. So my mother said, you know you are the best part is you like computers, you are into computer. Why don't you not share this knowledge with people? And you should start helping children. And that's how I started working individually going to people's house and teaching them computer at home first. And then from there I got a call in Army Public School Pune where I joined. And that's how my journey began as a computer teacher. It was completely different. What you boys are nowadays enjoying, artificial intelligence, it wasn't existing that those days. Only black screen in front of you. And uh, no mouse, only keyboard. Imagine that kind of structure you have and you're working with just keyboard. So to introduce that to young kids like you, it was very challenging. But I love challenges. Thank you, sir. So how has your experience been at St. Peter's for the past 24 years as a teacher? It has been amazing. School has done wonders to me. I will not deny that because what school gave me, I don't think so any other school would have given that. A free hand to teach children, introduce them to latest technology. Funding such projects, you know school has to take such bold decisions. Thanks to management, principals, during last 25 years, you know everyone helped in getting the new things in school at par before it comes in mind. And that's how our kids have been, you can say, they had a hands-on experience. Before, before even they could reach out in class alone outside. They knew many things which even engineering schools don't. And that kudos goes to school 
management and school itself and children of course because they were willing to learn new things and that gave me immense pleasure in introducing all things so my kindness not is towards only the management of school it's what children also it's a part of it because they believed in me as a teacher that you know he might show us something good and which might be helpful and when i look back now one name is there dhruv agarwal you see there he was a uh, great cadet of ncc he has been a great computer student as well you can take utsav gupta below that deepak say right these are the boys who are great and they were great in mathematics and they were great in computer as well so i love you know going now i just put there those two names it doesn't mean that others should be so good but yeah but they came in my mind it was here the moment i read their names you know those i went back in those days imagine in 1996 what do you think how many years back it is somewhere around 28 years no 1996 how many years ago somewhere around 30 years really sure are you so the, how 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 many decades are those three mm. decades what's your age sir 15 15 years exactly half of it you can imagine those days admitted in school in 1996 left school and they are here now and they are doing wonders in their life right you will do the same i'm sure so thank you for the question i don't know how great i have answered this but i try my best so so the next question we have what was some of the biggest challenges you faced when you first started G- and how did you overcome yes the first challenge in school was uh, it was a graded subject in school it was never a uh, you know compulsory or evaluated subject where you would get marks it was just given grade like b how you get a b c grades and so no children were at all interested in it because you know whatever you do you are going to get c or d grade why should we learn so then i had to go to our principal those days mr ines and uh, i requested sir i said sir i am a full time teacher in school and i don't like my subject to be graded it should be evaluated the way it should be 50 was in practical 50 was in theory but at least we should begin with and he agreed and immediately in the next year in 1998 onwards we started having a regular full fledged syllabus for children and they started learning that subject as a regular subject and that was the first you know what do you say uh, change which i had to make in school where sometimes we have to force to learn something new and later it becomes our habit right so that's what i tried to make happen thank you sir thank you sir yes sir so can you share a memorable a memorable moment from your teaching career that stands out to you uh it was on two occasions when uh, in the year 19 1999 there were only two children for computer applications and one boy scored 100 and another boy scored 99 in boards so it was you know uh and that was just my like fourth third or fourth year and you felt you know you get those ones when your student achieves a great marks and goals and those is the most different it's like it was it went in now how you have 100 marks project 100 marks uh, theory paper it wasn't like that it was 80 marks paper and 20 marks project so to achieve 100 you have to be really good in theory as well you can't just get away with practical all the time right project work and he did it and later it happened uh three times i suppose that in 2004 in 2008 and 2014 i had children those who scored above 95 they were almost 10 10 children every single moment and that was great really nice so these are my my kind of milestones for myself in the teaching career of course this covid gave us little setback that 
I don't know, I should blame COVID or I should blame myself that you know, children didn't do that way. They didn't score more than 98. They reached up to 98 and they were stuck there. 98, 99 were the past. So it was really nice. But those years, children have achieved. I'm happy about it. Thank you, sir. So, the next question is How has the field of computer science education changed since you first started teaching? And what are some significant technological advancements you witnessed over the years? And how have they impacted your teaching methods? Yes. Uh, you know, it is the only field I believe which keeps on constantly changing. Almost it upgrades itself every six months, should I say. And to implement in school, it takes one and a half years. Certain new thing which comes in market or it comes in education field. So what has happened is at the starting school, as it was a graded subject in the year 1997, we had only five computers for children. Children in class were 30, and we had only five computers. So it was very difficult for to conduct practicals. You know, so first I had to convince school members, body members, that you need to have a good lab for ourselves. And they were kind enough to introduce 10 computers at, at a go. Every single year we purchased 10 odd computers. And it kept on, we kept on evolving at every single 5 years span, 5 to 10 years span. And it came into such a position that we got 30 computers constantly with one single lab. Now you can imagine we have 30 computers, 2 labs now. Yeah. So, coming into just for students 60 computers and having only 5 computers for all children this is a big difference, right? And they have been updated till now 7 times in the last 25 years. So, 7 times we have modified ourselves, we have upgraded our syllabus and I have to myself learn every 6 years a new thing completely which I have to teach. Before that, you have to improve yourself, learn, get knowledge about it, then you know. And so it was no doubt challenging, but uh, is the kindness of school that did not budge from providing any hardware equipment or whatever was put up by me for the management. Always it was a good one. And that's how backing you need. Then you can achieve whatever you want. Yes, sir. So, next question that what's your teaching philosophy and how do you implement it in your classroom? Yes, in your class, you must have noticed that children aren't, all children aren't uh, addicted to technology. Some of them don't like it. You know, for such people, uh, you have to give them what is that? How do we give a rabbit a carrot? That is like giving an opportunity that you will get something. So you have to create that kind of atmosphere and tell them, okay, if you do this, I will get this for you, we will get this introduced and so on. Like boys are here telling me, sir, where are the pro books? I, I agree fully with it. But it's like, till I don't tell pro books, till you are not excited, you will not find what a pro book will be. Why is it important for me? So you have to keep on stimulating their thoughts, stimulating them with new things introduced all the time. And that stimulation only works. And at par, at home, whatever they have technology, if better technology is provided in school, better than that, I think so students get cracked. And that's what I kept it for us 24 odd years. So hopefully that has worked well with you. I believe so. so and, and, now, and now that you have mentioned Chromebooks, could you please give us and the viewers a short introduction of what are they and what could their impact be on this school? Yes, uh, I believe a Chromebook could create a great impact because if you look at the logical part that if a child has a chance that he is stuck somewhere in his, there is a question and there is no answer for him. So what he would do, he would just Google it, right? 
the other way was in school that he could approach a teacher and ask that question to the teacher. Imagine if teacher knew, the teacher would answer him. If not, teacher would tell you that I will just find out and let you know. So there is a delay of almost a day in receiving the information. But here when you have a Chromebook of your own at your disposal, the moment you have a question, you will look for an answer and you will get it. And those are hardware control. So teachers have complete control over those Chromebooks. So it's not that whatever you do, teacher won't know. Teacher will surely know what you're doing on. So you have an opportunity to gain knowledge. And teacher has an opportunity that what you are doing also teacher knows. Teacher has control over your knowledge gain. And that's how that is a tool which will help us. So trying to pursue our school management, hopefully uh, management and principals will agree and they will give us Chromebooks on ASAP basis. Thank you sir. So, so our next question is, how do you keep up with the rapid changes in technology and ensure that your students are learning the most current information? Yes, uh, I'll tell you only what works in this field is passion for your subject. Right? So there are so many teachers I know who have worked here for almost 13, 14 years. Uh, I know that the reason why they excel in their own field, the reason is passion. If you have passion for your own subject, you will make sure that you are always on the top of your subject. Right? Because a child in school is bound to ask me questions and I am liable to answer them. Right? So to fulfill that, my passion towards my subject comes in handy. So what I do is every year what I have to introduce, I basically do my homework in the month of April, whatever I have to do for the coming year. So the when new year begins in June, children always have something new in their plate. So they are always engrossed in finding what is going to happen. If there is a question mark, you look for an answer. And that's how you create interest in the subject. Till that you don't do it, you will not like it. That's how it works.